Hello, everyone. Hello. I would like to introduce today, I am here with me, Niki Strabian. Hi, everybody. And uh, as I said to you in the first video, uh, this is the second video of the series that I would like you to do with interviews with people who live their passions, who are doing the job that they really love and are passionate about, to inspire you, others, to make the shift and uh, understand why you should do that. And also to give you kind of life examples of certain jobs and professions that you might want to really get a good hint of what people do, how their uh, daily job looks like, how the day goes, what are the most maybe difficult moments and the best moments to share with you. So I just hope that this interview will inspire you. And shortly now I would like to introduce who Nikki is. So Nikki is a portrait phot photographer. She is doing photography with children, newborn babies, families, wedding, business portraits. She's loving her family, loving her new dog, one year old. One year old, she one year old baby. Big fan of uh, friends, having friends around, doing great cafe latte. Yes. <laughs> loving yes. cakes and life. Yes. Yes. Life in general. I love it all kinds of hats. You yes. will very rarely see her without. That's true because I don't know what to do with my hair. That's the real reason. Don't tell anybody, it's a secret. <laughs> so, Nikki, uh, welcome. I'm very happy that you took this opportunity to inspire my audience. Thank and you. Thank you for having me and watching <laughs> this. And maybe we could start a discussion. Uh, you could in, um, introduce yourself and actually say, how did you start doing photography and when was it and why? Yes. I started when my children were born, when my first child was born, of course. So that was, I don't know, what, 10, 11 years ago. And because we are foreigners living in a foreign country, I thought that my family and my parents are so far away that I would like to maybe show them some pictures of my kids once in a while. And my dad bought me a camera and that's how it all started. I've never mm -hmm. taken a picture before that. <laughs> and then at some point I thought that I am so good that I have to make loads of money with this. Mm -hmm. which obviously didn't happen so I found this online forum and then I've been submitting images and they trashed them terribly and I was in tears because I thought it's my best work it's my child I love this image that's terrible of course so they trashed it and they trashed the next one and they were very good at giving advice and constructive critique which I loved so I learned mm -hmm. everything basically from that then at some point I was able to submit the portfolio which they said is good enough and then I started a business at some mm -hmm. point, maybe seven years ago or so. Okay, but you have been having a real daily job, right? Yes. When you started. Yes, I was on a maternity leave mm -hmm. when I started mm -hmm. for a long time, five years actually. And then I started my business and then that took off quite nicely. But because I was on maternity leave with small kids, that mm -hmm. you juggle that quite much so that you don't have that much time. You don't run a full-time business. And then I went back to work. And then I was at work and I had this little side job called photography. Yeah. How did you manage this time when you had actually two jobs and a family? Not so well. <laughs> I didn't have a dog, so that was easier. <laughs> <laughs> Our only hobby was fish tanks that my husband has and they don't take any time. But uh, yeah, obviously we had to share the responsibilities quite well with mm -hmm. my husband who's supporting and very well willing to share everything mm -hmm. with me. So. It was nice because this job with families is in the afternoons and during the weekends. So mm -hmm. that's, that worked quite well in that sense that I have my daily job during the day. And then in the afternoon and evenings when I, the kids go to bed, I was mm -hmm. working on the computer and during the weekends, a short shoot in the morning and, or sometimes in the morning and in the afternoon and mm -hmm. editing every night and not sleeping much. <laughs> yes. And that must have been quite hard. <clears throat> that was. I heard a lot of stories when people start their own business and they just make a switch from day one to day two. So they kind of leave the corporate life, open up the business, and then they also suffer a long time to get it running, get it up to speed. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, mm. a lot of challenges on the way that you don't really count with. And many people just run out of money. So I advise everyone to do it smartly, slowly, step by step. So this is one solution, but it has also a dark side. Oh God, yes. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's not easy to have two, two jobs in the same. No, no, you really don't sleep. I mean, if you do want to do it properly, and I was still learning a lot at the same time. I'm still learning. It's a continuous thing with photography. Mm -hmm. But um, 
you know, you're at that stage when everything is so new and you're mm -hmm. so into it and it's excitement and enthusiasm and all that. So you want to spend every minute. I was dreaming in black and white pictures for a long time. <laughs> it was funny for a couple of months. And then, then it was, I was just too tired. I was sleeping like mm -hmm. three hours per night for a long time, many months. And that's not enough for anybody, not even for no. me. And I'm a superwoman. <laughs> <laughs> so what mm. made you to make decision actually to quit one of the jobs? In your case, the corporate one. That is a funny story. I think it's funny. I was sitting in the office one day and I watched the whole Audrey Hepburn movie without nobody noticing anything. So I thought that, you know, I don't want to live my life like this. I do nothing. I contribute nothing of real value here. Mm -hmm. I love my colleagues. I loved my corporate job. I learned so much there. I think I was quite good at it, but it didn't bring me any joy at that point anymore when, you know, you could do something like that and waste your life away, basically. Mm -hmm. It's nice to get money for watching movies. I'm not saying not, but, you know, it, I didn't want to live like that. I wanted to do something. You know, you're in your prime years, you know, there's all this strength you have and all this, uh, you know, positive energy and it needs to go somewhere where it creates something good. Mm. Mm. What gives you joy about, you know, shooting the pictures and especially of people which are quite... Yeah, I need to have people in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. I can't photograph nature or I love pictures of nature and mm -hmm. animals and insects and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But if it's not people in there, it's not hot. What gives you the joy when you are doing photography of people? For me, it's the people. That I meet new people every day and that I'm creating something that makes people happy. Mm. Mm. Tell our audience, especially the ones who maybe are dreaming about being a photographer, <clears throat> or you might know somebody who is dreaming about becoming a photographer, how your day looks like, if you can even put it to some frame, but mm. kind of the average day. Average day would be, I wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning or before seven. Then I take the dog out, I take the kids to school or they walk themselves nowadays. And uh, then I drive to a shoot normally because I work with small kids and they are the best in the morning. So we start around nine o'clock with the shoot and I shoot for the whole morning, depending maybe with the newborn, it's a little, a little longer with uh, finally with older children or with just adults, it's maybe an hour or an hour and a half. Then I drive home. I am editing, answering emails, invoices, you know, doing the business end of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then my children come back from school and then I am trying to still do some business work, which doesn't work so well when they're around. And then we are doing the whole family afternoon and around nine o'clock I sit down to the computer and I continue with editing and all that. Mm. And during summer, it's a little bit later because I edit best when it's dark. So mm. in Finland, you know, it means like 11 <laughs> o'clock in the evening. Oh, yeah. oh, or later. So not the evening, it's the night. It's the night. Yeah, well, I call it evening. Yes, you know, yes. It's, it's twilight. Mm. <laughs> and how did you manage actually to shift <clears throat> from the corporate life to something that you wanted to get to learn and wanted to uh, start the business but then you didn't have the entrepreneurial background so how did you learn how to do the sales marketing and all of that around mm. doing the picture it's not just doing the picture right? no no I had quite a good strong business background from you not know, the marketing and sales I didn't have anything you know anything anything strong there it was very hard I have to say it's very difficult because you're basically selling yourself Mm -hmm. You're selling your own skills as, mm -hmm. you know, one woman company. This is all you do. So you're your own pimp, you know. And uh, for me, that was really difficult. But what helped was that I was part of a group of photographers who were in a similar position. So when I was in a situation that I didn't know how to deal with or I needed to uh, have help or encouragement on uh, how to deliver pricing to my clients so that it feels confident for me, I had a group of basically friends that I could ask mm -hmm. them. So I suggest to everybody that if they do the same, that they find mm -hmm. people in their own business that they are probably not direct competitors, mm -hmm. which today is not a problem. Online, you find anybody. And then you can form this kind of nice friend relationship when you're helping each other without being in this difficult situation when those people are also your direct competitors mm -hmm. in the same area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good advice for everyone. Mm -hmm. And tell us, because Nikki, I forgot to say one thing when I was introducing a loving family dog that she also loves 
good jokes and laugh. Ah. So we just had one before the shooting the video. But <laughs> tell us a little bit about the most funniest moments. Oh God, yes, there's a few. Um, I don't know. Would you find it funny if I told you that if in the incorrect moment you bend over to pick up something from the floor and the mom is holding a naked newborn above your head and he basically poos all over your head? <laughs> and then I, was, I was going to a business meeting straight from that shoe. Terrible situation because I had this yellow crown and, uh, <laughs> and I had to ask the client. I'm in clients' homes if you can imagine that. And uh, I have to ask the client that, uh, can I please have a shower here because I'm going to this fancy restaurant for lunch with a new client I've never met before. So can I please go without this jewel? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so it can get quite. Some positive side. If you are a life coach or a businesswoman, this will never happen to you. Yeah, yeah. I seriously have a shitty job. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm sorry for using a bad word. It's true in my case. <laughs> <laughs> and this was one of the funniest moments, but what are, let's say, the dark moments or hard moments, difficult situations, difficult clients? Mm. Your clients are babies, but with yeah. parents. Yeah, of course. I mean, um, for me, it's difficult when I make a bad decision and then I suffer for it. I don't think that, you know, I don't think that my clients are difficult. I think I, as a professional, I need to expect all the places where it could be difficult for them and make it easy for them as part of my job. So I don't see my clients as being difficult. I try to limit what they can choose from because it's easier for them and easier for me. So, you know, clear processes is something that I'm really big on. And um, for me, it's difficult, for example, when I have this situation, it's maybe a little bit funny as well. I had this situation where I, had new fancy shoes and I wanted to wear them to a shoot because you know I'm so fancy and um, they were really slippery and I'm shooting a lot in nature and there was a little boy standing on a rock and I had these shoes on and I wanted to take him and lift him up like fun play yay, and put him down off the rock and I stepped with one shoe on the rock it was after rain slippery like hell I slipped and now I'm having him in the air I'm falling forward. I have a heavy camera with a long lens on my back and it starts swinging and that slow motion decision making like, am I going to drop the child or am I going to hit the camera on the rock? I decided for the camera. It's insured, not the, oh God, that, was, that went to pieces, glass flying all over. It was terrible. And uh, then just go pick up the replacement camera from the car and you're like, well, it's okay. I'm insured. Let's shoot on, you know. And, yeah, but it can be, that's hard when you, you know, uh, there's a moment where it can be potentially dangerous. I'm worried always about my clients that mm -hmm. something's going to happen. I'm so heavily insured how, how it's possible, like all the insurances that are possible to have. I have everything. I'm, I'm freakish about that. Yeah. Well, I remember last time we discussed together, um, you mentioned this juggling uncertainty and ambiguity. Mm -hmm. So how would you maybe explain our audience and those who really love uh, dreaming about being freelancer and entrepreneur and mm. photographer. What is there unsure about your job? Mm. It's of course always in my line of business. Um, you have bookings for a few weeks ahead, maybe mm. four weeks ahead. If you're lucky, you're mm -hmm. fully booked. Mostly at the beginning, you don't. You mm -hmm. have, you know, tomorrow's basically always free for quite a few years. and. Um, and then you don't have anything, you don't have this kind of certainty that money will come in, but you have debts, you have, you know, cameras to pay off mm -hmm. and car and mm -hmm. other stuff that you need to do. And, and but you don't have this uh, sure income because mm -hmm. people for family shoots, they, or for newborn shoots, they often call in the last moment, like, oh, we just thought of having pictures taken. Can do you have time tomorrow or next week or something like that? So you don't get bookings for when it's now, it's, you know, August, so you don't get the bookings for the next spring normally. In weddings, it's different because mm -hmm. then you book for the next year. Yeah. But, uh, but in my line of business, this is hard. I found it very hard for a long mm -hmm. time, this kind of uncertainty. And also, I think you must depend as well on uh, children getting sick or, mm -hmm. you know, yes. kind of ad hoc moments that you might have something booked, but then still it doesn't happen. Or here in Finland, let's face it, 
the weather. The weather. Yes. <laughs> Yes, the weather. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the lack of sun mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I love that. For me, that's good. Yeah, I have this personality that I absolutely love when something happens only when it happens. That, mm. that my calendar is open and that everything moves freely around. And that's something. And the flexibility is. A lot of clients is worried, are worried that, uh, that, you know, oh, we are calling now and we have the shift tomorrow and my child is sick, aren't you mad? And I'm like, no, this is part of the business. Mm. I work with children, this happens all the time. Mm. And I, I love this, that I can have my life that unwraps day by day, this kind of, that you don't go to work and you know that, you know, next year, 16th of July, I will be at work, eight to four. I love that, you know? So for me, that's good. It's definitely not for everyone. That's not for everyone. No. Not even for me. I love changes. I hate routine, but these kind of ad hoc moments, like, oh, it started to rain or oh, kid got sick. Mm. Yeah. And your day, you have to actually, you have to reshuffle your day and throw yes. all the time. Yeah. yeah, it's hard when it's like, we, for example, we just had a string like that, mm. that it got so prolonged, it got, it got in so late mm. that I had a lot of sessions booked for when people thought it was going to be spring weather already. And then they kept calling and canceling, postponing, postponing that let's wait for when it gets warmer. And then it all happened in two weeks and I worked 21 hours per day. It's yeah. terrible. So, yeah. Yeah. What would you advise our audience or those who are watching the video? <clears throat> who shall consider this kind of a job for whom it is suitable and mm. for whom not or what is your experience? Mm. Who can become a great photographer? Everybody. Really? Yes. I firmly believe that. I never considered myself an artist. I still don't. I think I'm a professional photographer. I deliver. I deliver for anyone. Mm -hmm. I hope, you know, the same value. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that you can learn the vision. You can learn to see the pictures. Mm -hmm. And it's just lots of practice. Mm -hmm. So everyone can become a photographer. But on the other hand, they say that average photographer lasts five years. And that's because people go into this because of the money. And money yes. is not the reason to start this business. This is not where you make money. Mm -hmm. You make a good salary for yourself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, dreaming of like uh, many, many, many zeros, that's yeah. impossible because you only have as many hours per month and you can only squeeze in as many clients mm -hmm. and only this amount of money is reasonable for the clients to pay mm -hmm. and that means that your income will be limited by that yeah Th thank you for saying this because very many people choose the profession based on uh, what they have seen parents doing and the uh, cousin was so let's say great doctor or uh, famous actor or whatever so we are following some um, personalities we follow some people who were successful we don't see the other side usually and uh, because they were successful we kind of create this image that uh, if he was a good lawyer and successful and rich I will be as well but that's not really a necessity it doesn't happen for everyone and there's so much hard work behind and I think great photographer it's kind of a lifestyle correct yeah. me if I'm wrong so probably you have chosen that profession because you love connecting with people you love doing uh, photography but it's also about as you said, you love the changes. It's not routine at all. It's a very living and also very social job. Mm. So if you are very introverted, you don't like people, probably not the best. No, no. I've seen lots of photographers who are great photographers who then ended the job because they couldn't deal with the clients. Either. Yes. It was too hard. Yeah. Because you get demanding clients and there mm -hmm. are situations that are hard. Normally, I think that's so in every business that you start, that if you have a difficult situation, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. It's very trying because you're selling your services. So you're selling part of yourself. You're mm -hmm. selling part of your soul. You put a lot of love in it. And then when people are not happy or some problem happens and you got this kind of a difficult situation and you need to do like detached problem solving, mm -hmm. it's difficult because you're so emotionally involved mm -hmm. and people don't know how to deal with that. And they often find it too trying. But I think it's in every business that it's only first time when it's a hard this situation. Second time you're like, oh, I've done this already, mm -hmm. you know, and then you can solve it with more grace and yeah. also calmer heart. Mm. And also what I think you can agree, hopefully, is that when I imagine how you started, that you had two jobs, long, sleepless nights, mm. a lot of things to learn, studying at home online about, you know, how to do it, how to edit, how to do the marketing, social media, mm. Facebook, all mm. of that. Mm. Uh, probably you wouldn't be able to go through that if you wouldn't have this burning passion and desire to succeed, right? 
Of course, but that's part of your personality, mm. isn't it? I think mm. it's something that I've driven to do well anything I do. Mm. And when I don't, I'm disappointed. So I have this ongoing project now for a few years that I haven't been able to finish, which I still hope you know which one. So I'm still hoping to finish that one day, but that's like, I consider that a huge failure. I consider that something where I have failed myself. Hmm. Yeah, so what would you like to advise our audience or any hints and tips? Mm. as a closure based on your experience yeah i think that you know i think that for me at least lately it has become the most important topic for me when i speak about these things about entrepreneurial life that um, nowadays in social media people get to hear all the time about that uh, you need to find your passion mm. you need to have your dream job blah 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 i didn't choose this this kind of happened to me because you know it just happened i didn't have any time when i was sitting like what would it be nice to do? What is my dream? Hmm, I want to be a photographer. Not once, <laughs> never. So if you haven't find, found anything yet, it's okay. I, it doesn't make you a loser. Mm. It doesn't, mm. you know, it makes you feel these mm. positive messages are nice, but they have this other side yes. that when you are not in that position or even searching, if you're just having a job, I don't know, if you're a taxi driver and you don't like it in particular, or if you work in a restaurant and it is not your dream job, or if you are a photographer, but it's not your dream job, mm. it's okay. It doesn't have to be. It brings money home. You need to feed your family. There's mm. more priorities than having a dream job in my opinion. For many people, yes, absolutely. Mm. And I totally agree with your message that many people feel frustrated that because I don't have my own business and because I'm not the business owner, entrepreneur, and I'm just employee, I'm not good enough. So to be very clear, wherever you are, and if you are employed and happily employed, please continue doing and contributing to the company you are working for. We, we can't be all freelancers, entrepreneurs, and business no. owners. We can't. We need the employees as well. But we need engaged employees. We need people who love what they are doing. They don't need to be dreaming like Nikki was black and white pictures. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> you don't need to be that passionate about your job, mm. but you need to be loving uh, what you do because if you do something just 50%, you save yourself. That is Whatever true. you do, you do 100%. Yeah. So at least make sure that you love it to the point that you can deliver 100%. If you can't deliver 100%, there is something wrong. And the truth is also what I get to hear from very many people. Either it just happens somehow, mm. And it happened to me to be uh, to become a headhunter and come to HR side. Never heard about it before. And you can read my story on my blog as well. So many people just get introduced to certain opportunity and they just take it. And it just happens to them. And sometimes something bigger must happen. Like you get really sick and you are in a hospital for mm. three weeks and you get time to think. Mm. And many people have certain breakthroughs then. Mm. Or you go to certain seminar and then you have some totally new idea. Mm. So the problem is that we don't actually sit and think because we don't have time for it. Mm. If we have time, we go out with people, we are loud, we chat, but we don't take the time to sit in peace and think. And that's why I do the workshops that I do the workshops where you come and have the kind of safe environment that you actually get to think about. Are you living the life you want? Are you doing things you really love doing? And if so, I'm happy for you. If not, you get the clarity. Then you can take some steps and actions. But at least you get time to think. And if you really think you can do it at, at home on your own, try. But it's very hard usually. So it's much easier to come somewhere where you are introduced to, around, surrounded by people who will actually have the same task. You feel safe environment. Everyone has the same ambition. You don't know anyone, so it's also safe to talk. And... Um, many ways it's very good and to have the clarity i mean i would wish that so many more of you would be more passionate about what they do as nikki because she enjoys her life oh. she loves what she's doing she loves meeting people she loves she loves actually i think every aspect of your life mm. she is full of positive energy she's laughing all the time wherever she comes and if more of us would be like her Imagine the effect on, on the society. If we are all engaged and loving what we do, wouldn't that be really nice? Mm. And I think we love working with people who are actually passionate about what they do. So if you want, first condition, if you are from Finland, second condition, ideally if you are from close capital area and you need some photography, portrait photography, mm. I'm sure you want to have it from somebody who loves what they are doing 
reach out to Nikki. Her website is www.nikistrvian.com and uh, there will be also text under this video. Reach out to her, go. And if you know somebody who is passionate uh, about uh, studying more about photography, who wants to become a photographer, who would, might want to have some questions to Nikki, reach out to her. And uh, who would have some other questions, reach out to me. So watch the space. Nikki, thank you very much thank for you. inspiring talk. Thank you. Have a great week still, rest of the week, everyone. And watch the space for coming videos very soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.